in the last video we have gone through the charge controller that is the first component of a balance of system in the second component of a balance of system is batteries now let's talk about the batteries in this video so a battery is a very very important component in a pv system why the battery is required in order to store the energy generated by the pv array battery will be used right so the battery a single battery may be used or a battery bank may be used depending upon the requirement battery bank means series and parallel connection of many batteries if you can say battery arrays battery array in, in in case of a pv array we can use a battery array to store the energy that is it so uh, the primary functions of a battery in a pv system are and the first there are three functions the first one is the energy storage capability and autonomy energy storage capability means so it the battery have to store the energy which is needed by the solar pv array fine what is meant by autonomy autonomy means say for example you are designing a solar pv system and while designing a pv system you need to talk, you, you you need to consider the number of days of autonomy also autonomy is for example due to cloudy cloudy due to the cloudy weather or due to rain or in the rainy season you will you don't have the solar energy so even though there is no solar radiation available for you to generate the energy your battery should your system should be capable of producing the energy right if, if there is no sunlight then the panel will not will stop working and obviously your battery will not get charged and that is the reason why you need to keep number of days of autonomy is one day you require 100 watt hours a battery requires 100 watt hours so you need to keep two days of autonomy or three days of autonomy or one days of autonomy so if you take two days of autonomy then you need to triple the battery battery size that is for three days even though there is no sunlight you your, your solar your battery can can last for two or two more days that is what is called a autonomy that is to store the energy we'll use the 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 function of a battery is to store the energy and second one is voltage and current stabilization we'll talk about this autonomy in detail in the designing part voltage and current stabilization to supply power to electrical loads at stable voltage and currents by suppressing or smoothing out the transitions that may otherwise occur in the pv system the third function is to supply the surge currents that is to supply surge or peak operating currents to electrical loads or appliances right that is in order to operate the induction motor the starting currents will be very very higher so from the solar panel you will take the energy and the starting currents will be much higher that the, that the higher currents will be taken up from the battery that is how you will use this battery these are the three primary functions of a battery in a pv system what are the different types of batteries we have two different types of batteries we have primary batteries and secondary batteries primary batteries are not the rechargeable batteries whereas the secondary batteries are the rechargeable batteries and we also call them as storage batteries while charging the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy while discharging the stored electrical energy is again converted back into electrical energy and in the solar pv system it is recommended to use lead acid batteries owing to its uh, availability in large number of sizes and other other one is its the cost is less and one more thing is it, it's a uh, well determined characteristic para parameters performance that is the reason most of the pv systems will use lead acid batteries nowadays lithium ion batteries are also into the market these lithium ion batteries are very costly but they are more accurate than lead acid batteries now let's talk about some of the battery parameters and terminology of the batteries that we require in this uh, that we require to know in order to understand the battery the first parameter is battery capacity the battery capacity is measured in terms of ampere hours or watt hours or 
kilowatt hours so the battery capacity means it is the maximum charge storage capacity of a battery maximum amount of charge that you can store in a battery is termed as a battery capacity it is in terms of ampere hours eh so the battery capacity can also be expressed in terms of watt hours or kilowatt hours but how could we derive the battery capacity in watt hours or kilowatt hours battery capacity in watt hours is equivalent to battery capacity in ampere hours multiplied by the battery nominal voltage that is say for example if the if there is a 12 volt and 100 ampere hour battery sorry a 12 volt and 500 ampere hour battery is there the battery the ampere hour capacity of a battery is 500 ampere hours now what about the watt hour capacity of a battery 500 watt hour into 12 volts will give me sorry here it's a 100 100 ampere hour battery so 100 ampere hour into 12 volts will give me 1200 watt hours or 1.2 kilowatt hours right so higher so the battery capacity can be expressed either in ampere hours or watt hours or kilowatt hours then the important point is higher the ampere hour rating of the battery higher will be the size of the battery because higher will be the chemicals required inside the battery thereby the size of the battery is will be more and thereby the cost of the battery also will be increases that is higher the battery capacity higher will be the size and higher will be the cost and higher will be the size that's it next one is depth of discharge what is this depth of discharge it is the measure of how much energy has been withdrawn from the battery how much energy can be withdrawn from the battery is nothing is termed as depth of discharge so in many types of batteries the full energy stored in a battery cannot be withdrawn in, in other words the battery cannot be completely discharged without if, if you do that then the battery will get damaged and the lifetime of the battery will be decreased if you completely discharge your battery then and if you make the battery dead then the lifetime of the battery will be decreased so the depth of discharge of a battery determines the fraction of the energy or the power that must be withdrawn from a battery say for example let's talk about our mobile phones we all have a mobile phones and uh, we'll get a low battery alert right it depends upon your phone sometimes you will get it at 30 percent sometimes you will get it at 80 percent and sometimes you'll get it at 10 percent right so for example if you get if you if you get a low voltage alert at 30 percent what is the meaning of that please plug in the charger immediately you should not dis discharge your battery beneath below this point if you discharge your battery below this point the manufacturer specified battery life will be decreases that, that is why you need to plug in the charger whenever the battery voltage will will show whether whenever the battery shows a low voltage alert that low voltage at this 30 if it is showing at 30 percent means what is the depth of discharge 70 percent that is you can charge you can discharge your battery only 70 percent of the storage capacity only you can use you can use only 70 percent of the storage capacity then the depth of discharge is 70 percent if you can use 80 percent of your storage capacity then what is the depth of discharge 20 80 percent if you can use 90 percent of your storage capacity then you will term it as the depth of discharge of the battery is 10 percent in an example shown a battery can store 10 kilowatt hour of energy and a manufacturer specified that its depth of discharge is 90 percent which means it can only discharge only 90 percentage of it 10 kilowatt hour that is only 9 kilowatt hour only the battery can discharge it is what is called depth of discharge right if a battery can discharge more than or equal to 80 percent if the depth of, if the depth of discharge of a battery is more than 80 percent you call that batteries as deep discharge batteries 
as i already told you you will use two different kind of batteries in a pv system first one is a lead acid battery for this lead acid battery the depth of discharge will be in the range of 50 to 70 percent whereas if i use lithium ion batteries then the depth of discharge can be increased from 80 to 100 percent this is all about the depth of discharge the third parameter is state of charge what is state of charge the present battery capacity that is the present state of a battery is nothing but the state of charge suddenly now if you look into your mobile phone and, and if you see you are charging your battery percentage is 57 percent what is meant by 57 percent the battery the battery capacity is at present it is at 57 percentage that 57 percentage is nothing but the state of charge it may be 10 percent it may be 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent or 100 percent right Current, if the battery is fully charged, then the, then the state of charge is 100%. If the battery is half charged, if the battery power is, if it is showing 50%, battery indicator is showing 50% means the state of charge is 50%. If the battery indicator is showing 20% means then the state of charge is 20% only. That is it. And then the next point is called a self-discharge. What is this self-discharge? It is the electrical capacity that is lost when the battery is not used for a quite long time so because of the self discharge the battery capacity is reduced say for example you have you have a battery of 10 kilowatt hour battery and if you if you didn't use it for a long time and you kept it on the shelf for a long time then after one month or two months if you if you take the battery and if you measure the storage capacity of a battery it will it will it will it will comes around to 8 kilowatt hour only the 2 kilowatt hour is lost because of uh, not usage of the battery because of non usage of the battery and that non usage of the battery leads to the self discharge the battery automatically self discharges itself why it will self discharge if you keep the battery for a long time on a shelf some of some chemicals will be liberated and because of that the storage capacity of the battery will be reduced so the, that is the reason why you should always keep the batteries in a low temperatures not in freezers but in low temperatures as because the self discharge rate of a battery is proportional to the temperature as the temperature increases the self discharge rate of the battery will increase and thereby the storage capability of a battery will reduces the next point to be discussed is the round trip efficiency what is this round trip efficiency say for example it is nothing but efficiency of a battery the storage capacity of a battery is 10 kilowatt hour you have feed in 10 kilowatt hour of energy into the battery right you have feed five you have feed five kilowatt hour of electricity into the battery and you could able to discharge only four kilowatt hour of electricity from the battery what is the meaning of it? 1 kilowatt hour is last in the process of charging and discharging. So, the efficiency corresponds to charging and discharging is nothing but the round trip efficiency. That is only 4 by 5. That is only 80% is your round trip efficiency or the battery efficiency. So, this, this round trip efficiency should be as high as possible. And you can see whatever we have discussed the 4 parameters in a single stretch state of charge is the current state of a battery depth of discharge is the uh, the the percentage up to which only the battery can be allowed to discharge is termed as depth of discharge round trip efficiency it's because of the charging and discharging plus because if you are feed in 100 watts and if you can get only 80 watts from a battery that is our round trip efficiency is 80 percent big and remaining 20 percent is lost because of the inefficiencies in charging and discharging processes Right. Charging means conversion of electrical energy into chemical energy. Discharging means conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. In this process, some amount of electricity is lost. And self-discharge. Because of this, if you keep, if the, if you keep the battery I, I, ideal, I, I, ideal for a quite some time, then automatically the storage capacity of the battery will decreases which, which is termed as self discharge rate the self discharge rate is proportional to temperature as the temperature increases the self discharge rate increases and thereby the storage capacity of a battery will decrease and last you last and very important thing you have a thumb rule that state of charge plus depth of discharge is always equal to 100 percent that is 
in case A. If the state of charge is 100%, then what is the depth of discharge? 0%. Second point. So, in both cases, SOC plus DOD. SOC is 100, DOD is 0, which will be 100%. And then and B. Now, the battery is used up and it came to the state of charge is 40%. That is, when you see a battery, the battery indicator indicates 40%. What is that indicates? The state of charge is 40%. But what about the depth of discharge? 60%. Your depth of discharge is only 60%, which means state of charge plus depth of discharge is equal to 100%. So, state of charge is 40 and depth of discharge is 60, which will turn out to be 100%. And the battery is completely drained, that is state of charge is 0. Then what about the depth of discharge? 100%. So, state of charge is 0 plus depth of discharge is 100%. So, 0 plus 100 will be 100%. So, always SOC plus DOD is equal to 100%. Next important parameter of a battery is charge or discharge rate or C rating. C rating of a battery. What is the C rating of a battery? C rating of a battery is the measure of the rate at which the battery is discharged relative to its maximum capacity. How, how could you find out this? The C rate can be obtained by dividing the ampere hour rating of a battery with number of hours required to fully charge or discharge a battery. Say for example, let's take a rated capacity of 100 ampere hours battery let's take a 100 ampere hour rated capacity battery right 100 ampere hour rated capacity and if the c rating is 1c what is the meaning of it the battery can charge 100 amperes in one hour or the battery can discharge 100 amperes in one hour it is a nominal trend now let's say if the if the c rating of a battery is 2c means the battery can charge 200 amperes. The battery can charge 200 amperes in half of the time. That is half an hour. More electricity, more more current in less time. 2C means double the current in half the time. Right. That is 200 amperes in 30 minutes because 30 minutes is half an hour. 1 by 2 hour. If you multiply 200 amperes and half hour, you will get 100 ampere hours. The battery capacity is 100 ampere hours. So, the current increases means the time should decrease. It is nothing but the C rating. That is, if the battery is 5C, then if the C rating of a battery is 5C, then 1C means 100 amperes in 1 hour. 5C means 500 amperes in 1 by 5 hours. 1 by 5 hours means 12 minutes. That is 60 by 5 minutes, which will be 12 minutes. If the battery C rate is 10C means 1000 amperes in 6 minutes. The battery can charge or discharge 1000 amperes in 6 minutes. No, the other way is also possible. If the C rating is 0.5C or C by 2, what is the meaning of it? The battery can charge or discharge 50 amperes in 2 hours. Multiply 50 and 2, you will get 100 ampere hours. Now the battery will be the battery will be very very far, very very fast when the C rating will be very very high. The battery will be very very slow when the C rating will be very very less. So C by 10. 0.1 C means 0.1 C means 100 amperes by 10, which will become 10 amperes in 10 hours. It will the battery will take 10 hours time to charge or discharge 10 amperes of current. It is what is called the C rating of a battery. Fine. Next one is energy density. So, the battery, the battery energy, whatever, per unit liter of the ele electrolyte, per unit of, per liter of the electrolyte used in a battery is called the energy density or the volumetric energy density. The power density means watt per liter, watt, watt per liter. The energy density means whatever per liter unit. Power density means watt per liter. That means the maximum available power per unit volume. Then specific energy, this is also called gravimetric energy density. That is the, the, <coughs> the nominal battery energy per unit mass of the battery. Specific power means the maximum available power per unit mass. This is all about the... <coughs> and one more important parameter is battery life. What is the battery life? The battery life is, not, is described in terms of charge and discharge cycles that the battery life is the number of charge and discharge cycles the battery can experience before it fails to meet a prescribed performance criteria which means in the manufacturer specifies the battery life is 10,000 cycles means 
10,000 charging and discharging cycles which means the battery can be charged 10,000 times the battery can be discharged 10,000 times one charging and one discharging you call it as a one cycle likewise you can do it 10,000 times that is what is called a battery life is expressed in terms of charge and discharge cycles it is all about the battery in the next video we will talk about the inverters in a PV system and one more topic called net meters thank you